Hello everyone, this is Dennis Welling speaking uh, about uh, another tutorial for uh, the necklace material this time. So, uh, Vlad Terra 7353 um, replied to the previous video I've uploaded about the gemstone, the photorealistic gemstone material creation, and wanted to know how I've made the gold material for this necklace. Um, so let's right get to it, I would say. The um, material is actually fairly straightforward, as uh, advanced users of Substance Painter um, might see already. So um, yeah, I thought this, this should be a quick video to cover the creation of this material. Um, so this is how it looks like in its final form. Uh, it's not really too complex. The only features that we can see that are standing out here is a little bit of edge wear. Uh, some imprinted normals uh, for these blossoms and then some additional um, yeah how should I say wear and tear like some smudgy fingerprinty sort of like discoloration and detail in the roughness map so it looks like um, someone touched this necklace and did not clean it properly as you would expect from like jewelry um, yeah, showing decay after a couple years. So nothing too complex, but let's jump on it. So I'll turn off all the layers and we go through it from start to end. Actually keep that on. So uh, first of all, I should probably mention again, um, the there's one special thing that is not really part of the gold material is uh, this fill layer two. Uh, this is the uh, base color behind the gem that is sort of like pushing and supporting the gem color. If we remove this from the layer stack, um, you will see in the end that sort of like uh, standard gold material is showing up behind the gemstone, which is something we don't want for the gemstone rendering. Um, but yeah, I'll go in more detail uh, yeah, in, in my other video where it's actually about creating the gemstone material. So let's not uh, focus on that one for now. I'll just turn it on. So the first of the first thing is just the base layer. In the base layer, um, we just get a standard gold color. You should, I haven't done this. I'm just saying this here. Make sure that you pick the correct base color um, for a material like gold. There is material charts that you can find online for the correct material values um, that are PBR, yeah, compliant, so to say. Uh, so you do not do, don't pick a random thing in here if you want to be super correct pick the correct color that gold um or like fine gold uh has and then use that one as your reference so that's being said that's just the base color the roughness value is fairly low what i like to do when i build up materials and substance painter is start with a very very low roughness value because when you're building up dirt and grunge and scratches and um, maybe even like weathering weathering effects on top of it the um, the roughness will all add up on top of each, of each other and it's much easier to like build up a roughness that way because this is also how it works like in, in, in real life I think um, and that way you make sure that that you, you build up your material in the correct way. So g gold, when it comes out of factory, when, when it's polished, um, is almost like a mirror. So we expect a very low roughness value for the initial base material when nothing is applied to it. Then the next step here um, is, so yeah, this is just the mask. Uh, then the next step here is to add a, a little bit of, uh, yeah, a few scratches and um, the scratches are using a uh, levels in the height channel so if we we use the levels on height so th this is the the uh, drop down actually um, you can change it to height by default it's set to base color I think um, we can change the height value and if I zoom in very closely you, you will see that there is a little bit of height applied to this but yeah be very subtle with it if you apply height at all because um, these scratches are so subtle that usually for a game at least you just want to put that detail in a roughness map so you don't waste um, like you don't waste putting detail in, in a very expensive normal map um, so yeah this should either just be roughness detail or put it uh, in the height very subtly 
and that's that so adjust the levels um, to what it needs to be and as you can see here like like what what beginners often do is like they think oh scratches are actually you know it's something that's being cut into the material and they they go quite aggressively on it and um, make make a big deal out of it in the height map and then well if you zoom out it might look fairly all right but if you zoom in this looks like absolutely mangled and this is way overdone so be very subtle with it i always um go from zero and then check like okay how far can i push it like this seems to be all right be super subtle with it don't overdo it that's the trick for this one and then we have a uh, mask that is using a mask editor and this uh, mask editor is just um, using a grunge texture so usually the, the mask editor comes with two image inputs uh, by default and I just picked a grunge scratches dirty and a grunge uh, plaster cracked that is just something there was no thought process behind it I just knew that I wanted to have some scratches on my gold so I, I just went for something in that I could find in the um, yeah uh, uh, grunge textures that that would fit so that is just what I picked and then what this um, mask editor is doing it is basically taking your baked maps um, by default all of them um, but you not always need all of them in this case it's looking at the space not um, world space normal the curvature the ambient occlusion and the thickness so it knows what your mesh um, what your bake details are and then you have a few sliders here that uh, take that information and also the um, uh, the textures to further control the mask so we can we can apply global blur to this which is blurring out uh, the scratches now you can't see them anymore because as they are so blurred or a global balance which should increase the appearance of it so I could really crank this up and it all becomes scratches um, or I could lower it and then you have less scratches and this is pretty much how this works um, there's not much more to it you can tweak uh, the textures separately so there's a balance for each of these two different grunge textures that are then mixed together um, with this mask editor all right so that's that I believe if we switch to roughness I would have to quickly check what I did here because this is clearly having a lower roughness as the layer underneath that that is what I meant so this is the way I'm sort of like uh, this is the way I'm building up the material and I think so apparently the roughness just comes with um, with this material so for this specific material I picked a um, I picked uh, rust fine which is a standard material that you can find just here and this rust fine material obviously as it's a full material it has its own its own roughness value and when you put that one in um, yeah you uh, you will get the roughness of, of that material there's nothing else you can do you could further control this uh, roughness by adding a uh, sort of like a fill layer that is set to roughness only and that way you can um, lower or increase the roughness of this material but yeah if we turn this off no roughness if we turn this on it will use the roughness that comes with the material and that's all it does um, and it shows here that it's using the roughness for the material so um, that's that let's switch back to material mode to continue our uh, stacking up of layers so in between there we have this um, uh, this layer for the gemstone uh, nothing we care about in this one and here we have the big flower uh, height on top so and this is where it gets a little bit more complicated but not too much so in the material um, I've turned off all the channels but the height because we do not want this to have any other information than height and this sort of like slider then uh, controls how deep this flower is being pushed into the gold material um, or not that's all and this one though has an anchor point that is 
is called Philea, well, I should call it Big Flower. So I've put an anchor point on this one, I'll get to that later. Um, keep that in mind. There's an anchor point on that, and there's an anchor point on the mask as well. It could be that I'm not using um, one of those, but we'll see later. And this Big Flower then, Big Flower mask, uh, is having a blur applied to it. This blur is just for um, getting more out of the height I put in there because if, if you don't have a blur and you have a very sharp black and white mask then uh, whatever you do in, in the height it's not really doing much as um, it needs some grayscale information to determine um, how deep things are being sort of like pushed into the metal but by blurring the uh, black and white uh, blossom we give we we create some mid gray value detail and that is is then helping us to uh, soften out this mask a little bit so again if we take a look at uh this blossom that should be in here somewhere under alphas we scroll down uh there's the blossom and as you can see, it's a black and white mask. So the height information can only go from pure black to pure white, which is something we don't need and we don't want. We need some grayscale information. So this here, for instance, this has a this is using the full range from gray to dark, which is why we have enough information to uh, push in, push it into the normal, if you know what I mean. And this is why we're using the blur, because the blur is then blurring this mask out and we get some grayscale information, um, which can be seen in the mask. So I hope that makes sense. That's everything. And then we have the anchor point. And I think I might, might be that this anchor point is the important one. Why we have an anchor point here, it should show up whether it's used or not though. I'll get to that later. Maybe it is not in use actually, but what you would use these anchor points for is to um, reference this um, layer uh, further up in the stack and it will know then that you push this one into the normal because like otherwise the uh, substance painter can only use the baked normal map that you baked into the mesh. It doesn't know about any other detail, any other normal or height detail that you put in in your mesh on top of the of the baked uh, maps right so but when by default when you create a fill layer or something it only knows what's being created or what what's in the normal map from your bake um, that we can see here like if we go to mesh maps which is your bake and we click on the normal that is what's being baked or what has been baked in my case nothing um, but if we click on normal height and mesh there we can see that we put in the blossom but Substance Painter cannot know this by default. It doesn't know that we put this one in as, as an afterthought, pretty much, and haven't baked that one. So in this case, if we want other layers to utilize this, this height information that we put in here, then we need to reference this. We need to tell Substance Painter, okay, from this point on, this here is part of the normal map, and please use it to... Uh, like for the other generators to put in like um, cavities, dust or anything else. Like you probably know if, if you've used Substance Painter before, you probably know that um, there's generators that are using uh, ambient occlusion or uh, curvature to put like dust and dirt into uh, crevices uh, and things like that. But it will only put that one in your baked details. It doesn't know about anything that's being added on top in a custom way like this blossom but it will know if you reference it by an anchor point um, so that that's really all i've done here so this mask is now stored as an anchor point it's saved in there then on top of that we have the small flowers which is exactly the same um, i just used a different uh, mask which is small flowers um, this one here it's also just black and white, so we need to again blur this one uh, to get a better representation of um, the full height range. Afterwards, um, we then have this fill layer, um, which is using my anchor points, I believe. So this fill layer uh, uses a steel painted, honestly, 
<laughs> that's probably not the right choice. I just want to have something uh, black uh, forming up into the crevices, something that you would um, you would get from like if if you know if if you're wearing necklaces or having rings and and stuff, and you have something imprinted on it like over time by just going with your 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 greasy fingers over it touching it and everything the metal um sometimes discolors because it's it sort of like oxidize um, oxidize and re it reacts with the um with the sweat on your fingers um so it, it oxidizes and you can get uh, rid of that by just polishing it again uh with a polisher and um but it usually builds up in these sort of like creases and it's hard to get rid of uh, unless you really go with it with a with a like a towel and polish uh, into these creases and this is what i wanted to show um that this has been cleaned uh in these areas but not really thoroughly which is why some of the grime and grunts is being left behind in the um uh, in the corners so that's the material uh that is just steel painted um, we create a mask in the mask editor and we are using the anchor point. I'm happy about that. So this is the this is the only reason why Substance Painter knows now that it can fill the blossom. So it shows in the layer stack. See if I hover over it, how here, uh, in uh, on the left, um, it's being being highlighted. So this micro height, uh, as it's called. So I've edited. I've used the MG Mask Editor. I've enabled micro height, which is uh, under micro details. Uh, and it's usually set to false. So under micro details, micro height and micro normal can set can be set to true. And this is exactly the normal map detail I was talking about. This normal map detail is not in your bake and needs to be added uh, in a custom way. And by referencing this anchor point, and I have a few of them, you, you just need to click uh, to um, click on the correct one, and you could give it a proper name as well, so it doesn't have to be like called fill layer 5. If I rename this properly it will show up with the correct name in here and you pick the correct anchor point which is sort of like copying the mask into this mask editor right it will now take the blossom as it is and and copying it into this mask editor and I can do some further adjustments to this uh, by adjusting the global balance uh, of this mask which is further affecting um, what I'm sampling there okay and then we put a simple blur on it so we have like so we get rid of these super harsh edges there that you look super jacked we don't want that and on top of that i put it put in a base uh, a paint layer where i erase where i manually erase everything i don't want so that's that's what i've done here and last but not least we have another fill layer on top uh, which is doing i believe exactly the same for the smaller blossoms so we again have steel painted uh, we again have a fill layer, we again use the mask editor, and this time it is referencing the micro height of the small flowers, as you can see in here, it's being highlighted, instead of the big flower. And we blur it again, we erase from it. I guess I didn't have to do much there, <laughs> because it's not showing any difference. So we erase from it, and that's it. That's um, all about this material. And then you have a basic sort of like gold material with some custom uh, yeah, patterns applied to it and some custom um, grunge or wear and tear on your material. So yeah, uh, sweet and short. Uh, we are at 20 minutes already. Um, I would have loved to kept it a little bit shorter, but I hope that was helpful and uh, thanks for listening. Yeah, that's it. Have a good one.